Hi guys, welcome back. This month it is Engineered Fun with Scrap and Stamp for their August blog hop and I thought I would play around with this fun tunnel card uh, value pack from Photoplay. So in this pack it says it makes six tunnel cards, um, dies are not included, so obviously use what you have. Um, let's open this up and take a look at what we are in for. So looking on the back here, um, there's a, a QR code that you can scan to get some ideas. There's a couple ideas on the back. Um, it says supplies that you might need are adhesive, a bone folder, ruler, some patterned paper, cardstock, and embellishments to decorate your card, and a, a one-inch double-sided tape adhesive. So let's go ahead, open this up, and take a look. These are really great cards. If uh, great pack, sorry. If you are not that great with uh, creating these yourself, you can go ahead and create uh, tunnel cards yourself. Um, they're not that hard to make, but again, if you're in a rush or it's not something that you enjoy, um, then you can go ahead and buy these packs. Again, it is um, six cards in here that you can make. So right away, we've got a bunch of little pieces here and then some instructions. So let's take a look at the instructions. So we should have um, window one, and that's this piece here. It says window one, die cut this panel with largest die shape. So it recommends you can use a rectangle, a circle, or a square. So obviously this doesn't come with a die so you're going to need some sort of um, shaped die to do this with so either um, you could do a star a circle oval uh, squares or rectangles and then you have window two okay let's take a look at this so this is window two and it says die cut this panel with the smallest die shape so again you're going to want multiple sizes of whatever die you choose it shows you here where you're going to put your adhesive um, so step one we're going to locate the eight by five and a half inch card that has a single vertical score line this is the card base that's this here and it says fold it in half so that the short half is to the back Okay, let's see if we can do this together. So the short half, that would be this part here, is to the back. Grab my bone folder. Okay, so we've done that. Um, this is the card base. Folded half so the short half is to the back. Set this piece aside and complete steps two to six. Okay, well, that's step one. All right. Step two, locate the window one piece. Oh, wait, that was the piece that we had. Hang on, what are we doing here? There's got to be another. Aha, this one, this one here that doesn't have anything on it. This is our base piece, so I got ahead of myself. Okay, so this is the base piece, and it says fold the short half which is this one on my right here it's really hard to see the score line you can kind of see it there so there's a score line and it wants you to fold that to the back so we'll go ahead and do that this is the right way gosh good thing I'm doing this for you guys so you don't have to worry about that okay then we're gonna set this to the side then we locate window one piece fold on all score lines in the same direction so that it resembles a loose box Okay, well, I've done that one. Go ahead and fold up on all the score lines so that it resembles a loose box. Okay. Okay, so there's our loose box. Um, then it says locate window two piece that's here. Add 1 8 double sided tape adhesive as directed. Do not remove the release paper from the adhesive until instructed. Fold on each score line so that adhesive is facing outward. Okay, 
So we'll find our score tape. And I have mine here. So it says to apply the adhesive on here, but do not remove the release paper. Okay, so we can do that quite easily. Now at some point, I'm going to have to run this through my die cutting machine with the dies that I choose. But it should tell us to do that at some point, I'm hoping. Okay, so there is our score tape adhered on. Now, we're not going to release that. Then it says fold on each score line so that the adhesive is facing outward. Okay, so I'm assuming that's this way. Adhesive is facing outward, right? Like that. Hopefully you can see that okay. So we're on step four. To create the tunnel window for your card, die cut the pieces as showing using two dies of your choice that nest together. Die cut window one first using the largest die. Place it over there's two overs here. Place it over over window two and line it up then line up the score lines so that they are centered. Die cut window two using the smaller die. Use removable tape to temporarily secure the smaller die in place while die cutting. Okay, so I'm gonna have to run these through our die cut machine and I'm gonna have to go ahead and grab some dies that I want to use. So I will be back once I find my dies that I want to use. I'm not sure what shape I'm going to go for yet, but uh, it'll be a surprise when I get back. Okay, so I have chosen my little frame dies and I decided to go with these Sizzik framelits, these little ovals. Um, if you're wondering um, which they are, they are 561840. Um, they're by Stephanie Bernard. So I've just chosen two that would fit on my panel and I think these ones will work we'll give it a try we've got a couple cards to play with if it doesn't work out so as it said it said we're going to um, to create the tunnel we're going to do window one with our largest die piece I'm gonna set that aside so I don't lose it and I will center this on I'm going to use some purple tape just to hold it in place. Now the purple tape is a light adhesive but I do like to put it on the back of my hand um, just to kind of release some more of that adhesive just so it doesn't rip my paper because when I put it through my die cut machine, I use the Gemini Junior, when I put it through the die cut machine it squishes it down and will make it adhere more and sometimes when I go to release it it'll rip so I want to be very careful of that. Now keeping in mind as well that I'm going to put the adhesive more to the inside of the panel because this is what we're going to remove and I know that um, if it does happen to rip and it rips on this piece here that's okay I don't want it to rip on here I guess it doesn't matter either way because I think I do want to cover this and I'm just kind of thinking whether or not I want to uh, cover it with pattern paper before or after I guess that's kind of something that you'll have to think about. Um, I think I want to do it I think I want to do it right away. I want to do it in one fell swoop. So I think what I'm going to do is um, th thinking about the scene that I want to create. I want to create um, I think a forest scene and I got these great little um, items here from Scrap and Stamp and this is called Blue Bells and Buttercups. And this is the wood shapes. Um, there's 10 pieces in here. And this is by uh, Craft Consortium. Um, so these great little woodland creatures. And then I've got the corresponding paper pack, which I think is a lot of fun as well. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop off and I am going to go ahead and um, adhere my pattern paper onto this uh, piece here. 
um, just so when I die cut it I can do it in one fell swoop. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pick my paper and adhere it down and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have gone ahead and adhered down uh, the pattern paper onto my bases and I have just used some art glitter glue. This is my favorite glue. Um, I love it because it is a liquid adhesive and that it doesn't leave the bumps underneath that most liquid adhesive leaves. It kind of leaves those gloopy glue bumps underneath. I don't like that. Um, I know that you can go ahead and take a card and um, smooth it down, um, but this I, I find that I, I really don't have to do that. I can just use my hands to burnish it down. Uh, one thing I did want to mention with this paper is it, this is gorgeous paper. I'm not sure if you can see it, but this is actually shiny. It's got like a shimmer to it. Um, it's beautiful. Not only that, these papers are double sided. This is shimmery as well. So you really get a great bang for your buck on these papers. Um, again, this one, um, and then on the back side, it's got another pattern to it. And I do want to quickly um, kind of just flip through this for you. Um, there are pieces as well that you can fussy cut out on both the front and the back of the cover, which is really fantastic. You can definitely use some of these images. Um, there's great little seam pieces in these, and you get quite a number of pages. Again, they're double-sided. Like, look at these little critters. They're absolutely adorable. So what was that? You get four, five, one, two, three, four of each um, pattern, which is really great. These would be really great scenes as well that you can cut out. Again, four pieces of each, it looks like here. Um, this one is really great. It's got some texture to it. It's kind of bumpy and shiny. don't know if I can do it justice here in the light. But look at that, it's beautiful. And it is like that on both sides. Oh no, sorry, it's not on both sides. This is um, a matte finish on the back here. But one side is kind of glossy and shiny. So you get lots of different papers, these little cute bumblebees and these um, little bluebells they kind of look like. So again, a really great bang for your buck on this paper pad. This is actually going to be the, oh sorry about my phone there, um, this is going to be the scene that I'm going to use behind um, the, the tunnel card and I'll end up just using kind of half of it and I can use the other half on, on another project. Look at these cute little cupcakes, there's little glittery um, bits on there, um, again some polka dots, so really really great um, paper pad here, lots that you can do with and again this one's called uh, bluebells and butter cups. So really, really great paper pack. All right, so let's move on and get this card finished. So I've got um, my panels with the pattern paper adhered on and I'm going to, this is window one, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of center this up. And I will Hopefully get it. I have a problem with centering things, so you have to bear with me. Use my tape here. And then, so what I'm going to do is cut this first and then I'll lay this one underneath to get it centered. So I'm going to go ahead and sandwich the, these in my um, Gemini junior sandwich plates and I'll run them through and I'll be right back and show you how I center this on. Okay, I do want to let you know that I ran this through my Gemini Junior twice. Um, I have created my own little sandwich here that works well for me. There's a piece of chipboard in here and my plates and I've got them kind of taped together. So the first time I ran it through uh, this way and then I turned it over and ran it through again um, the second way. Um, the reason why I did that is because I have two layers of paper on here. I wanted to make sure I got a good cut. So fingers crossed that that went well. And of course, I did it wrong. I uh, put my die cut on the magnetic sheet instead of the other way. But hopefully that will be okay. I do that all the time. And it looks like I got a good cut. So we'll go ahead and let me find my little... I don't know if I can find my little tool here. Let's use my scissors. Oh, here it is. I got stuff everywhere, guys. I'm sorry. 
Use my little pokey tool here to kind of bring up. And then the great thing is, is then you have this inside piece as well that you can use on another card. So that worked out well. Might be a little off, but that's okay. And then this piece here we can use on another, another project. So I'll set that aside. And now what we want to do is line this up. We want to line up these edges. So you want to fold back the adhesive because that's going to be adhered in there like this. So we want to line up these edges here, not the folds, but the inside lines. To the best of my ability, I'm going to line that up. And then I'm going to take this die, grab this for a second, and just hold this all down. And then now the challenge is to get this centered in what we've already cut. That looks pretty good. So go ahead and adhere this down with my purple tape. Again, you can use washi tape, whatever you have. Again, just maybe put it on the back of your hand just to release it a bit. And then I'm going to go ahead. This time I'll do it properly. I'll put it this way on my metal sheet so it doesn't cut into my metal or my magnetic sheet. Put my plates down. Do it this way. And I'll go ahead and run that through my die cutting machine twice again. All right, that's all done now. I can go ahead and release this tape carefully. And then we have another piece to save for another project. Okay, so now we have our two pieces. And hopefully they will layer together nicely. So what I had envisioned is these two pieces and then hopefully have something like this in the background. Maybe. Maybe more to the top here like this. So what I need to do now is put this piece on the inside here because this is going to fold over like this right let's see we should probably read our instructions here yeah so the next thing it tells us is to put it together but I don't want to put it together just quite yet I want to get this piece on here so I'm going to go ahead and do that part off screen um, because then we're going to have to put our two window pieces together and I want to make sure that I have my pattern paper on beforehand. Uh, what you might want to simply do is if you're confused about this process at all is go ahead and take one of these uh, cards that come in the kit and just put it together as is. Don't worry about pattern paper or anything. Just go ahead and assemble it um, and then you can see how it works. Um, I'm kind of familiar with this process so I know when I want the pattern paper to be on. So. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that off screen so you don't have to watch me uh, fuss and measure about. So I'll be right back. So now that I have the back panel on or my um, background on, um, there are two different ways to do this. Uh, one is this way you can put it on the back of this panel. Um, how this card kit has it done is that you're actually going to layer this piece inside like this. So you'll probably want to put your pattern paper on this piece. It doesn't matter really. You can do it either either way will actually work. Um, so I'm, I'll go ahead and finish off uh, doing it my way. But if you follow the instructions, you're actually going to want to put your background piece on this shorter side of the card base itself. But not to worry, this will still work. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to take this smaller oval panel and we're going to lay it along this inside edge here 
and then we're going to release this adhesive paper if I can get it to work here and then we're going to simply fold over this piece to adhere it down okay so now that starts the building of our tunnel card okay the next thing it wants us to do is go ahead and like I said it wants us to put the panel on the inside but because I've already adhered my background on this piece I'm going to do it the opposite way I'm going to use um, score tape for this um, that's just what they've recommended you can also use liquid adhesive um, but this score tape is nice and um, strong and sometimes with this um, glitter glue um, once it's down it's down there's not a lot of wiggle room for it so that's kind of the downfall of that liquid adhesive usually you have a little bit more uh, wiggle room with liquid adhesives. Uh, this uh, art glitter glue, you, you don't really. Um, for me, that's okay because um, usually I, I get you know my pieces down where I want them to. But if when you're just starting out, you might want to use an adhesive like Gina K Connect glue um, or Tombow glue, something that gives you just a little bit more time to wiggle your pieces in place. Um, I do a lot of. Um, journal making as well. I make handmade journals and so I like to use the art glitter glue for that just because it is a super strong adhesive. Um, I think I'm just going to put the adhesive around the edges and I'll show you why in a minute here. Because when I go to adhere this down, what I like to do is I like to just take off half of the adhesive and fold it over and this kind of lets me get my pieces in place before it sticks down now hopefully you can see this and I'm in frame all right put that down And I can line this up and once I've got it in place I can simply just pull out these edges here and my piece is perfectly in place. Alright, so now that we have that. All right. The next thing it wants us to do is we're going to fold over like this and we're going to release this piece here and fold this down. I'll go ahead and remove my adhesive piece. And so folding, folding this piece right flat so you can see that kind of one inch piece there. Laying it down. Is it going to work on me? Come on. Now it's not. I have to adhere that off. Ah. <laughs> so good thing I'm doing this for you guys. Um, for some reason it doesn't work with this one. Let's take it off here very carefully. Nice strong score tape. At least we know it works. Uh oh. Hopefully I didn't mush this up too much. Okay, let's try that again. Just going to put some new score tape down. Okay, so that's not the way to do it. Let's try that again.
lift up this adhesive. And then we're going to not want to show that piece. So make sure it's folded just so this shows. Like that. Now hopefully that works. There we go. Alright, so there is the tunnel portion of our card. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is put adhesive along here. So that when we open up the card, we can see our tunnel. Hold that down. All right, so let's go ahead and put adhesive on this piece here. I'm going to go ahead and use the score tape again. And let's see if I have some smaller. I don't think this is much smaller. No. It's okay. We'll just use two pieces of this. Rip that off. Again, releasing that paper. Tucking this into the corner there. And then folding it down. And that will lay our card flat. So when you open it up, you see your tunnel scene. Now I do want to put something over top of this. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a pattern paper for that and I'll be back. So to finish off this card, I'm going to use this one piece that we cut from the inside here and I'm going to go ahead and just glue this on top, hopefully centered. So I'm going to use my art glitter glue for that. You want to make sure that if you have art glitter glue that you always um, keep your nozzle clean and then if you have like a little pin um, always try to keep that in there just so that it um, doesn't clog up on you. Alright, so I'm going to add some of the glue. Oops. Go ahead and put my little pin in right away so it doesn't clog up on me. And then I'll adhere this down as center as possible. And then I have, I went ahead and these are the little bluebird um, wood shapes. And you get a number of them here. So you get the little bunny holding the bluebells. You get this cute little, I don't know if it's a, I think it's a badger. Um, this little donkey little picnic basket, this little chick, this cute little cupcake, sweet little bird. You have a deer and then you also have this little bunny with two cupcakes and then this little deer here. So I'm going to use these two pieces. All right, so I want to adhere the cute little bunny with the cupcakes right in the center there. Again, using my art glitter glue, you can use um, also something like this three in one. Um, this also um, works for wood pieces as well, um, and it's a nice strong adhesive. But I think my art glitter glue should be fine for this. We'll find out in a minute if it's not going to work. Put a nice amount on. Uh, go ahead and put that back in there. 
And then try and get our little bunny centered. That looks good. Press them down. It's a sweet little bunny. And then on the inside, you can go ahead and write your sentiment on this side. And then I thought it would be fun to have, I just stamped out on a little double flag end banner here, oh happy day. And I want to adhere that kind of near the top here. I think that would look cute. I don't want to cover up the cute little squirrel who's swinging here. So go ahead and tuck that up there. And then we'll just close it up and press it down. So we have, oh, happy day. And then this cute little deer, I thought I would put right here, kind of looking at the squirrel swinging. And it looks like this little bunny is about to give the little deer a hug. Go ahead and add some adhesive on there. Try and get this in my glue. And then press that down. Give it a good press and hold it for a couple seconds. And then that, let's see if we can check that in there a bit. That finishes our top card. So that wasn't too hard, it wasn't too long. Um, this kit really makes it super simple for you to create such a beautiful, fun little tunnel card. And then you can see how it's got the different layers in there. As well, what you can do is you can adhere um, clear adhesive um, or clear um, acetate sheets sorry on the back and you can adhere things to the acetate sheet to make them look like they're floating especially if you're doing a fun um, ocean theme or if you want to, something to look like it's flying in the air I think that would be super cute so yeah this is my card for the August Engineered Fun Blog Hop. I hope that it has inspired you to create something fun um, and a little more interactive than our typical everyday cards. Thanks so much for joining me and until next time, P.S. I love you. I just want to thank you so much for spending your time with me today. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're looking for specific materials that I've used in today's video, go ahead and check out the links down below. As well, I'd really love it if you sent me some snail mail. I'm always interested to know what you guys have been up to and what you've been creating, and I'd love to share your cards on my next video. Thanks so much again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. P.S. I love you.